So after our first video, we got lots of comments which asked us how Obamacare could possibly be paid for. Lots of them weren't very polite about it. But because of the new YouTube Google Plus commenting system, we can't go back and answer the comments in the old video. So we thought we'd make a new one right now. Welcome to Healthcare Triage. Let's start with the fact that the cost of Obamacare and its effect on the budget change from year to year. Also, anything in the future is just a projection. It's a best guess. Also, the more years you look at, the more it's going to cost. For the purposes of this video, we're going back to the beginning. When the law was first passed, all the calculations looked at its first decade. In other words, the numbers were valid from 2010 to 2019. They were calculated by the Congressional Budget Office, or CBO, a nonpartisan organization which works for Congress. All of Congress, not one party or the other. As many of you noticed, there are a lot of goodies in Obamacare. The Medicaid expansion, for example, was projected to give free health insurance to about 16 million people. That wouldn't come cheap. In fact, the CBO projected that the Medicaid expansion would cost about $434 billion over a decade. The subsidies and the exchanges cost money too. 16 or so million people receiving subsidies would cost the federal government another $464 billion. There were also some small business tax credits in the law for the first few years. Those cost $40 billion. Add them up and the projected 10-year cost of the ACA was $938 billion. And $938 billion is a lot of money. But that doesn't mean there wasn't a plan to pay for it. There was. We were going to get the money from grandma, probably with some advice about not diving into the shallow end of the pool. In all seriousness, the first big source of money is Medicare. Specifically, it was in the Medicare Advantage program. You see, back in the Bush administration, a lot of people thought that private insurance companies could do a better job of providing Medicare insurance to elderly Americans than the government could. In fact, this had been an ongoing debate for a long time. President Bush signed into law a new program to have the private insurance companies give it a try. Qualifying companies could receive the same amount of money that we would spend on government Medicare. If they could provide the benefits for less money, they could keep the extra in profit. Sounds fair, right? Well, it quickly became apparent that they couldn't do it. After all, there are lots of expenses in private insurance that aren't needed for government insurance. The government doesn't have to advertise or pay executives, and the government doesn't care about profit. So the private insurance companies got the government to start paying them extra. Eventually, it was costing us 14 cents on the dollar more for Medicare Advantage than for Medicare itself. Obamacare ended that practice. Private companies could continue to provide Medicare to elderly citizens, but we went back to the original deal. They got the cost of government Medicare and not one dime more. After all, that was the original intent of President Bush's program. The savings for this change? $136 billion. Alterations were also made to the way that Medicare would update the fee-for-service payment rates for care. Fee-for-service has always been a problem because it incentivizes you to do more, even if that more is unnecessary. That's a bad model. Savings? $196 billion. Medicare also used to pay what's called a disproportionate hospital share payment to providers who take care of the uninsured. But Obamacare is going to reduce the number of uninsured. Those DSH payments are no longer needed. Savings? $22 billion. There's some changes to how Medicare reimburses home health care for $40 billion. Some changes in how they paid for seniors' drugs, which actually cost $43 billion more. A revision to the Medicare Improvement Fund for $21 billion. Some reductions in subsidies to rich people who get the Medicare Prescription Drug Program for $11 billion. And finally, some changes were made in how Medicare programs relate to each other for a $29 billion savings. Add all that up, we save $417 billion alone from changes to Medicare over a decade. But Grandma can't foot all the bill. Remember the individual mandate and the employer penalty? People and companies are going to pay them. That'll net the government $69 billion. There are also some new taxes and fees on health insurance companies, medical device companies, indoor tanning, and other providers. Those will bring in $107 billion. There are some cuts to Medicaid, including cuts to its disproportionate hospital share payments. Those are worth $45 billion. And taxes. A new Medicare tax of 0.9% was passed on individuals making over $200,000 and couples making more than $250,000. Regular old Medicare tax was also added to unearned income over those amounts. That'll bring in $210 billion. Starting in 17, there's also a 40% excise tax, or the Cadillac tax, on insurance, on the amount paid above $10,200 for individual coverage and $27,500 for family coverage. Granted, not many plans are that expensive, but even so, this will bring in $32 billion. What's left? First, some miscellaneous health care provisions. These included increased tax revenue from coverage provisions, $46 billion, ending the cellulosic biofuel producer credit, is that really a thing? No? Okay. Anyway, $24 billion. 
Changes in how payments to corporations are reported, $17 billion. A change to medical expense deductions, $15 billion. And some changes to health savings accounts and flex spending accounts, $19 billion. Total for these, $149 billion. Finally, there are some changes to other programs whose savings were applied to Obamacare. These included education reforms, including the student loan program and Pell Grants, community living assistance services and supports, and public health programs and community health centers. Add those up for a final $52 billion in savings. I'm still not convinced about that cellulosic biofuel thing. Are you sure it's real? Add that up together and you get $1.08 trillion in revenue and savings. In other words, that's an increase in funds available on the federal budget of more than a trillion dollars to pay for Obamacare. Since it was projected to cost only $938 billion, that means that Obamacare reduces the deficit. I know, it's hard to believe, but you have to remember that the law is more than just the good stuff. It's so long and complicated because it also includes all these taxes and savings. That's how we pay for Obamacare. What's even better is that as we move forward, the taxes and savings get larger faster than the expenses, so it reduces the deficit even more in the future. You will hear people say that this isn't true. Most of them say so because they believe the government will repeal the taxes or stop the savings. Maybe. But that'll take an act of Congress, and Congress isn't doing much lately. But if you don't want Obamacare to cost more, don't let them make the changes. Tell them to keep the medical device tax. Don't repeal the excise tax. Keep the tax on tanning. If we do, and we pretty much have so far, Obamacare will be paid for. But not cellulosic biofuel, evidently. Thanks, Obama.